Welcome to Marketing Mash, brought to you by TheMarketingScope.com. Hi, welcome to The Marketing Mash here on TheMarketingScope.com. I'm Eric Vidal. I'm here with Brian Fonzo, Chief Digital Strategist at Broadsuite, and pretty much speaker, not author yet, but uh, overall marketing, tech, and social guru. And I don't know if you have those titles, but you do now. Uh, I'll accept them. That's, that sounds good. Okay. And uh, your Twitter handle is iSocialFonz. Yep. So make sure you follow Brian. Brian, uh, today we're going to talk about Twitter engagement. And, and from my perspective, you know, Twitter, yes, is a large social media tool, but it seems like it's part of event marketing even nowadays. And what I mean by that is with um, tweet chats and different things that are going on, it's not just, I mean, it, it's event-oriented-ish, if you will. It will, and if you think of it, a hashtag, really, that's what a hashtag is kind of simplifying, is almost like an event or you know, a focused topic. It's an ongoing event. It is, and it, it can continue on, and it kind of drives conversation, shapes conversation. And really, I think Twitter's been around for a while, but the idea of how you leverage Twitter, what the value, the value of Twitter, I think has drastically shifted. And there's more noise out there. And I don't even think it's just Twitter. I think it's social in general. And it's even in business. We talk about that a lot. And yeah. I mean, you always built relationships. So that's how you did business. And I think Twitter, if you don't use Twitter to do that, if you're, if you're doing it as more of a one-way communication channel, you're missing it. And I think that's kind of this whole future of digital conversation and these digital engagement now is creating a conversation. Well, well speaking of that, that Help me out. Yep. A couple pet peeves early on in my Twitter days, and even now, I mean, someone will post something, and I'll see it. I'll like. I, I I like it, and I go. I want to engage in that. I want to know more. They seem to be an expert on it, and so I'll ask a question, or, and some, they just leave it alone. Yep. Like they spray and pray. That uh, kind of you know, and so that's a pet peeve of mine. I know we're all busy, and sometimes it's hard to get back to it. But I mean, how do you handle that? Well, I think it's partially because, and I blame Twitters, I blame the Facebooks because I think the analytics we were providing were all very forward-facing. How many followers you had, how much you posted, the frequency you posted. They didn't really care if you engaged and built conversation. Yeah. And that's kind of shifted now. And I think we have to get over that. We have to get over. You know, I don't care how many followers you have. How many followers actually are engaging and care about the content you're sharing? So for me, it's you know, I mean, one of the rules I've always said is I'm not sharing anything I haven't read. And that used to be the old way where someone just pump an RSS feed, RSS feed and just link dump the whole everything. And I, I ask people, do you follow someone because they're an RSS feed or you yeah. follow for who they are? Yeah. I think that's something you have to kind of, which it's a change of, of mindset and how you leverage the tool. I, I think people are getting better at that. I mean, I, I don't know what Yes, it is. See, it's definitely changing because, now. Because, you know, I, I, I see some people, they're just, they're just blasting stuff out so they can get more followers. And... Um, I think it's getting better, but I still see it. Yeah, and I, I, I talk about it a lot. I, I only promote and share people that are actually doing it the right way. So there's lots of people that are doing lots of things out there, but if they're not coming out of my feed, because I think you really have to back up with your, you know, practicing what you're preaching, as well as, I mean, the engagement part is why you're on there. I mean, they, you're on a social platform. You can't forget to be social on a social media network. Yeah, true. So um, do you have a couple of Twitter horror stories that you can share? Everyone loves, you know, some good success stories on, on how to be successful, how to impact business with Twitter. But what are a couple, like, a couple of horror stories? Maybe leave the brands out. If you yeah, know. I'll leave the brands out. Um, I think, you know, part of it is like the hashtag all of a sudden became cool. Every Super Bowl commercial had it. Everybody talked about a hashtag. But then they really didn't even know what that meant. And like the hashtag was either, you know, it died. You know, they talked about the Super Bowl. And then two days later, they didn't even track the hashtag. And mm -hmm. I think one of the big things now is like social listening. But some of these brands, I mean, they would even set up automated responses. They said, everybody that used this hashtag, tweet them this. Well, little do they know that people are going to see that same tweet a thousand times in their feed, and what's, what do you do? Unfollow, right? So all of a sudden, they spent money on in investing in the hashtag, and all they did was they lost followers. They lost viewers of their content. You know, and another, another one you know, I think is funny is that you know, people only want to share their own content. And I ask you, every brand, I ask every leader, do you know everything? Are you the master of all? And if you are, I, you know, I'll shake your hand, and, and you know, good luck with that. But I don't think people believe that everybody knows everything. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it's kind of ridiculous to not share other people, promote other people, because it's another thing to say, you know, you'll even hear little things like, well, we want to build a community. We care about our community. We care about helping each other. Well, you're not helping anybody else. You're just spewing your own message. Yeah. And that's always one that uh, is funny. And then I, I'd say the, the last one that's, is an interesting one is people changing their Twitter handle or ch changing their name and then losing it, right? So like, you know, you had a brand, you know, Taco Bell went dark and Taco Bell did it smart. Taco Bell anchored their Twitter handle somewhere else and looked like they had zero followers at Taco Bell at the, at the handle because 
they switch the name back and forth, but I've actually seen a brand do that where they're trying to you know, play a little fun and when they did it, they didn't anchor the thing and someone actually took the handle and you can't get a handle back once uh, someone else has it if they give it up. So I think those are some of the funny ones that I think. So you got, you got to tell me, I know, I, who, who is the brand? No, I, I can't tell you on that one. I'm not going to right. expose right. that all one. All right. Well, speaking of hashtags, so my first grader, I remember him getting mad. I don't like going back to not knowing what a hashtag is. I don't yep. think he knew. But he got mad at his older brother and he said, hashtag, I'm mad at you. And then he walks away and I can hear, hashtag, you're, not, you're a mean brother. So anyway, so on that note, I got to mention the sock monkey. Yeah, I like uh, the monkey. I'm a monkey so fan. That, that was put up there on purpose, just to let you know. And so why are you such a fan? And so I got a monkey when I was, uh, when I was born. My dad gave me a monkey. It's named Zippy. And uh, I actually gave my three daughters a monkey as well. So we're, we're monkey fans. I, and I, I believe it kind of plays into my... Uh, my personality. I, I, I'm a big fan of failing fast and monkeying around for sure. There you go. There you go. Uh, hashtag Brian loves the monkey. Yeah. Did you know? Did you know you could story tell beyond 140 characters? And what I mean by that is uh, things like SoundCloud, which is a podcasting platform. When you actually tweet out a SoundCloud link, it actually embeds the SoundCloud file so someone can actually listen in their newsfeed. They don't, you don't redirect them to another website. They, actually, they can actually watch that. Um, Twitter rolled out recently, beginning of 2015, uh, Twitter video. So you actually get a 30 second video that gets embedded in the Twitter feed as well. And so for me, those are great things because you can go above 140 characters. And you know, we also do the pictures. I think you can actually tweet now four pictures in one tweet. And you can also tag up to nine people in those four pictures. Is so if you think nine? of this it way, nine? it's nine. It's okay. nine and... Okay. Uh, so that's and, not a did you know? I, I didn't know. Yeah, so it's nine. You can, you can tag up to nine. You can post up the four pictures. And you think of it this way. You put a 140 character tweet with the pictures in there. And then you tag nine more people. Look how many more eyeballs, how many more people are going to get on there. Now, I do recommend not just tagging random people for any reason. That's kind of a trend right now. Hopefully that'll change. But uh, you know, for an event, for I mean, things that you're working on, sharing four pictures, giving four unique perspectives, or you know, giving four quotes and four things that are going on, those are great you know, yeah. things that I think people aren't leveraging yet, but hopefully more people do. Yeah, that's, that's valuable insight. So um, video, you mentioned video. Video with Twitter. So they just launched Periscope. They did. And that's going against a, a tool that you've been using. Yes, Meerkat. Meerkat for, for some time. So any predictions on how that's going to play out, so short term or long term? The live streaming concept is, in, is just really cool. And it's not new. I mean, Ustreams existed all the... But really what, what these two tools are is it's mobile to mobile, one click. Literally, you press one button, you're live streaming. Yeah. And it's off of your mobile device. And that's what Periscope is. And that's what uh, Meerkat is. The nice part is it notifies your followers. And I, and I really mean this is, you know, I built up, the reason I was really successful on Meerkat is I started, I had a Meerkat strategy that existed two years ago. The app didn't come out until a month ago. But for me, I've openly engaged and built a community that loves my content. So when the new tool came, all I did was leverage it to share the content that I was already knew my community engaged in. So I think that's kind of the neat part. I think for brands, they're going to be able to jump on it because, yeah. I mean, if you want to show your inside of your culture and you have Food Truck Friday, why not put up a live stream of all of your uh, employees kind of having a good time throwing the basketball around or you know enjoying a food truck on Friday you don't have to point to your website that says you have great culture you're showing a live stream of it I think that authentic real and it, it plays into our reality TV voyeurism uh, yeah. you know style of life that we live right now but I think it'll be interesting I think right now it's really buzz heavy but I, I, I'm excited to see when it gets to this idea where, where people are really taking unique I mean Jimmy Fallon does his, his monologue before every his show his practice monologue on live stream how cool is that? You, get a, you almost get to be like a fan and sit in his dressing room. Yeah. And if brands could do that same way, hey, before a product release, we have an hour to our product release. Let's set up the live stream so everybody can see the war room yeah. and see us celebrating. I mean, it's pretty cool. And I think that's just one or two examples, and there's going to be more. I think it's going to evolve over the next year. The creativity is exciting. I think yeah. just, like, just like when Vine came out and Instagram had their, their short videos, the reason those constraints, the reason 140 characters, I love it. You know, I, I will joke that I was willing to pay money for one more character because you always have like that one, one button, that you, can, you know, one you, letter that, is left. Can you imagine if you create an app for that? You yeah, know, like $10 per character? Per character afterwards. But part of the reason I love it is you have to get to the point. I, mean, I talk fast to begin with, but if I have to be concise and get something in that 140 characters, I think you know, it's the same thing with the video, same thing with Twitter video, making it only 30 seconds long is all you can do for that. Yeah. Um, and then I think the, the live streaming one will be interesting as well to see where people are being able to, to embrace their creativity. Yeah, no, I love that you talk fast because the 30 minute webinar that we, we did the other day um, was only 20 minutes. Yeah. Hey, Save time, thank you. I do. I, uh, you know, time is money, right? Well, hey, this is great conversation with Brian Fonzo. Thanks for joining the Marketing Scope. Um, make sure you follow Brian and the Marketing Scope. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Marketing Mash. 
You can share your thoughts by following us on Twitter and Facebook. Subscribe to our podcast to keep up with the show. And of course, you can always find us by visiting themarketingscope.com.